and here we go. We're just waiting for the stream. So thank you for being today here. Uh, we got about 15 minutes where I would like to show you uh, one of the uh, latest projects that I've been working on is called JLISA. So uh, the reason why this tool came to be, and I guess I hope that some of you will, uh, this idea will resonate with you. Like yourself, I'm a Java developer and I like to write stuff. Personally, I write command line tools and UI tools. The choice of JavaFX uh, could be that, or you could use Swing, or could you use something else. The point is that once we have finished writing the application, it's time to let it go and make sure that consumers can use it. It's not enough to simply say, hey, here's a Git repository, and these are the build instructions, figure out which Java version and build version and whatever it is, and finally you get a binary. That is not very user friendly. It's, it will be easier for your consumers, for your clients to simply go where they like to consume the binaries. This could be a platform packager such as Homebrew, if it's Mac, or your Snapcraft, if it's Linux, or Scoop, Chocolaty, Winget, and Windows. There are many versions. So all these things are possible. It just takes a little bit of time to find how you can configure your build or some additional metadata files to go across the distance. So that was me a few years ago. I had <coughs> a handful of applications, but I didn't know exactly how to package them so that consumers will have a much easier time uh, using said applications. So I took inspiration from two other projects that exist out there. These two projects are GoReleaser on one side and JBank on the other. Now, as the name implies, Go Releaser is a tool that allows you to release Go projects. So anyone here using Go? I, I find it that it's an interesting uh, language. And the idea behind Go, or at least one of the things that it allows you to do, is build multi-platform binaries. But once you do, you are found yourself in the same problem, the same trouble. How do you supply those binaries to a user? So Go Releaser knows everything. It can publish to different package managers. It can create digital signatures. It can create checksums, announcements, the whole shebang. When I saw this project, I said, I want this for Java, but it didn't exist. At the same time, a friend of mine built a project called JBank, which is the best CLI tool that you can use besides Go Releaser, obviously, in the Java space. And that this tool allows you to do all kinds of things. It's kind of a shell with dependencies and more stuff. You have not seen J, uh, Java, JBank before. One of the things I would highly recommend you is to make use and have a look at this particular uh, project. The thing is that Max uh, did everything for JBank to be published everywhere, but he did it by hand. It was a lot of trouble. And I told him, hey, I just did it for my Go project with one configuration file. So. Uh, then it, it, it down on us. What if there was a project like Go Releaser but for Java? So that's how J Releaser came to be. So if you continue to use your same build tool as you use today, which may be uh, Maven or Gradle or Ant, whatever it is, you keep producing your builds as it is. Then you may supply an additional configuration file for which we have different formats plus the tool JRLISA, and as a result, you can create Git releases in popular Git services, both open source or private, uh, and even the enterprise versions. If you have binaries, then you have the addition of publishing to different package managers. It's not a requirement. If you're only interested in creating a Git release, you can do so. And additionally, once your release is posted, you can also announce it to many distribution channels. You can do it in the public, like Twitter and Slack and Sulip, or you can do it in private. You can do it into Teams or uh, Mattermost or emails, webhooks. There are so many different integrations. So how does this work? Well, you supply a command with plus as additional instructions, and this thing does its job. If you want the whole thing, the whole shebang, then invoke the orange command at the top, full release, and this performs everything for you. If you're only interested in creating a Git release, then use the release command or the blue, uh, any command in the blue stack. What is going to happen is this will create a change log based on all your commit information, and you can tailor how the change log will be created. 
Uh, if, if you have any input binaries, it will calculate checksums using different algorithms. You can create PGP signatures or project C stores called sign if you need to. And you can also additionally upload to Amazon S3 or J4 Active Factory if you want to. There are many different places. And of course, create a Git release. If you have binaries, you can also create um, those package manager specific files. So let's take, for example, Docker. So Jarelizer can create Docker images. In the first case, it creates a Docker file based on templates that will be prepared. The second case, it will create a Docker image in the package step. And finally, it will publish to any Docker registry that you configure in the publish step. So I mentioned templates. Uh, Jarelizer has a lot of information, knows a lot of information about your project, and it can also generate a lot of files based on pre-established templates. If you don't like or you need some other additional templates, then you can also supply those, and it's very easy to do. And of course, we have announcements. Now, your user expects your binaries to be built in the same way as you do today, maybe in Grail, all those that I mentioned. But if you want, your user can also assemble some of those uh, binaries for you. For example, custom cross-platform Java runtimes with Genlink across all other platforms, or native installers using JPackage for all platforms supported by JPackage, or native images with Graal native image as well. So in terms of integrations, here's the full gamut. There are all the Git services, the different upload services. In the future, we're going to support uh, Secure Shell, SCCP, and SFTP, and FTP. Uh, all the packages right there, you can see we support Windows, Linux, and Mac, and uh, all the different distribution channels. So there are plenty of options. The inputs that you supply, these are the things that you already built. So a binary distribution is a zip or a tar file that contains a very specific file structure. It's a bin directory that contains the executable or the launchable script. And in case of a Java distribution, there may be an additional lib directory that contains all the jars. Uh, another popular deployment unit, it's a single jar or fat jar or uber jar that contains all dependencies, so we support it. Because JResearch allows you to assemble these kinds of distributions, we have the JLink, the GraalVM native image, and native package, which is created using JPackage. Now, of course, this is a Java conference. I'm not talking about a Java tool, but let me remind you that the binary distribution could be coming from anywhere and from any source language. This means that if you find JRelizer to be useful for a Java tool, you can also use it for Rust or Perl or Python or JavaScript or anything you want to. The reason being is that we have a separate build step, the standard build tool that you use right now, Cargo for Rust, and the release step, which will be JRelease. You can launch it in many different ways. There is a CLI tool that can be installed in many, many different uh, formats, or you can use it as a Maven plugin, or as a Gradle plugin, or as end task. So we cover a lot. You can also use it in CI CD. And we have uh, custom-made guides and some specific support for all these different options. So we have a GitHub action that allows you to launch uh, JRelizer CLI. It also works on GitLab CI, on Jenkins, all those popular options. So now I guess it's time to do a quick demo. I'm going to show you a project that I have on GitHub. It's a very trivial Maven uh, application. It simply says, hello world, when I execute it. And uh, notice that it doesn't have any release whatsoever. And because of the uh, length of time, I think I can, I can do two types of releases right now. So the first one is I have this project here cloned on my repository, on my local machine. And I'm going to post a release to a remote. In order to do this, I need some sort of GitHub credentials or an access token. So that access token is already saved on my secrets locally. It's saved using an environmental variable or a well-known file that your user can find. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, let's say, let's ask your user for its version. And it will tell me I'm using the latest one. And uh, so now I can say, your user release. The project doesn't have any binaries yet. I just did a fresh checkout. I'm going to ask it to auto-configure from the data that it knows, such as the Git remote, the, the name of the repository, all those things. And I'm also going to say uh, the project version uh, that I want to release will be 100. 
Okay, so we do this, and notice that Gerald Easer said, I read some variables from this file. There are different formats, JAML, JSON, TOML, and properties. I chose TOML. And this is where my secrets are. This is where my GitHub token is. And it, you can see more information about the log, but eventually it says something like releasing to that particular URL. We go there, do a refresh, and now I have a tag, I have a release, click there, and you get this. So this works for any kind of project, hosted on any Git service. But we can do more. So if we have binaries, we can start adding more things into the command line. But as the command line grows, and too many options, very likely we're going to make a mistake. For that reason, we better use a model file, which is the one that appears here, jreleaser.jaml. Yes, I know, it's jaml. But we also support JSON or TOML. Or if you use the Maven plugin or the Gradle plugin, you can use the DSLs for each these build tools. So what we have here is a section where we tell there's some basic metadata about our project. And uh, this metadata will be reused for the specific platform packagers that we may want to use. And that there is a section where we explicitly say we're going to release to GitHub. We're going to overwrite every release so we can drop and recreate the same version. Or you can simply say, no, I don't want to overwrite. So once I post a release and I want to do it again, the tool will fail. And that's what, that is the expectation. And here we have a very explicit set of rules to how we can map commit messages to categories. And if you want, you can use emojis or something else. There are other ways that we can configure these rules. Moreover, we're going to sign artifacts. And the secrets are, again, part of that secret file that I'm not going to show for obvious reasons. I will going to create a homebrew formula. And here's a list of binaries that we want to publish. This thing here, if you have seen this in before in front-end development, these are mustache templates. This is the way that we can have some sort of variables within our model. So first thing first, let's invoke Maven and ask it to build the binaries. This is just a standard Maven plugins, AppAssembler and AppAssembly. So this creates the zip files. And now I can tell Jarlisa to do a full release. And this will recreate the release create the package managers, publish the home formula, and if I had any announcers, then it will also publish the announcers. So here we go. Notice that it, cre uh, it calculates the checksums for the input binaries. Uh, it also calculates the signatures PGP with my personal key, and then uploads everything, all those assets, and then creates the home formula, and if I had any announcers, there will be a notion there saying, oh, I post into Twitter or Slack or whatever it is. So with this now, I just do a refresh here, and notice that the changelog looks more differently. Also, uh, I was able to locate every committer. In this case, it was only me because it's a sample application. And I have all the different assets, including the uh, signatures and all the checksums. If you want to, you can put the checksums individually, or they go here. Or we have. We publish a, uh, a formula, right? And that formula went into this directory. Here we go, this repository. Here's the formula, and uh, here we go. It's right there. How can I test this work? Well, if I use this particular repository with Homebrew, and that would be saying Homebrew, install Almirai, tap app, and then, I hopefully did the uh, refresh of brew before this talk. Yes, here we go. Uh, just taking a little bit. It's downloading, downloaded. All right. Just give it a few moments. I know this is uh, frustrating because Homebrew takes a while. And now I can say this, hello world. As easy as that. Okay. Of course, you will have a much, uh, a much better working application. So this is it. This is the, what? that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do is this. So question, does JRLisa release itself since the first release? Because we deploy to many different capabilities. Can you install JRLisa using Homebrew? Yes. Can you install it using SD command? Of course. Snapcraft, Scoop, all those things. Why? Because JRLisa releases itself with its previous version. So we also posted one oh, two weeks ago on a Sunday morning before I left in an international flight. I had too many stressful tasks in that day. Believe me, 
posting this release was the least of them. Why? Because everything was automated thanks to JRLISA. So here I have some resources for you. All the documentation that you may want to find on the project, jrlisa.org. The project is hosted on GitHub. We have an open collective in case that you want to sponsor the project. And of course, we have a Twitter account. So thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy this. And if you find the tool to be useful, let me know. And if something fails, also let me know. And that's how we can make it better. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Don't know if you have any questions or if you want to rush into the keynote room. But uh, here, here I am. If not, well, find me on Twitter or GitHub.